Hello, welcome all for uh, session three of uh, module two. It is a transport layer. Uh, myself, uh, yes, uh, Satyanayan, faculty member, computer science department, JNNC, Shumaka. In uh, last uh, session, uh, we discussed uh, reliable data transfer 2.0 and uh, 2.1. Now we will uh, understand uh, reliable data transfer 2.2. Okay. Here, uh, only two types of acknowledgement uh, used that is acknowledgement 0 and acknowledgement uh, 1. As you can see here, uh, acknowledgement 0 and uh, acknowledgement 1 is uh, used. So, this is uh, NAK3, that is negative acknowledgement free reliable data transfer uh, protocol for a channel with bit terrors. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you wait for call zero from above. That is, you send the packet with acknowledgement zero and wait for an acknowledgement zero. Wait for an acknowledgement zero. Uh, and if the uh, packet is not corrupted, then the receiver the receiver will receive the packet and uh, send the uh, acknowledgement. After uh, getting the acknowledgement, you send the next uh, packet. Uh, that is, wait for call one from above. You send the packet with acknowledgement uh, one uh, for the receiver, and the receiver receiver will receive the uh, packet. Uh, if the packet is not corrupted, it will send the acknowledgement uh, to the sender. Like this, uh, the process continues. Let's see, if you send the uh, packet 0, you will get the acknowledgement uh, 1. If you send the packet 1, you will get the acknowledgement uh, 0. Like this. This is alternating bit. This is called an alternating bit. This uh, is a sender side. And these are some of the actions at the sender side. Sender will send the packet and uh, receiver will receive the packet. If the packet is not corrupted, then the receiver will send the acknowledgement to the uh, sender. Uh, the action uh, at the sender side is that is sending the packet and receiving the acknowledgement. Uh, after sending the packet, it has to wait for an acknowledgement. If the packet uh, zero is sent, then uh, acknowledgement zero. Uh, if the packet zero is sent, sometimes uh, uh, in alternating bit the protocol, you are going to get the acknowledgement. Uh, one that means you have to send uh, the next packet with sequence number one. Okay, if you uh, send the uh, packet with the sequence number one, then uh, the receiver will uh, send the acknowledgement zero. That is, the next packet to be received is uh, sequence number zero. Like this, it is also called as alternating bit uh, protocol. At the receiver side, what is going to happen? The receiver will receive the packet and it calculates the checksum. If it is not corrupted, then it extracts the data and delivers data to the upper layer and sends the uh, acknowledgement. Okay, uh, this uh, is the uh, work done at the receiver side. Receiver will receive the packet and uh, checks if there is any error or not. If there is any error, it will uh, uh, send the, the, it will request the same packet uh, again. Otherwise, it will extract the data, delivers data to the upper layer and uh, sends the uh, acknowledgement uh, for which it is going to uh, accept for the next uh, duration of time. Okay. It receives the packet and if the packet is not corrupted, it extracts the uh, data, delivers data to the upper layer and sends the acknowledgement. If uh, the packet receives and uh, the packet is corrupted, then it will uh, send uh, the acknowledgement uh, for the
the is it up? Ah, uh, 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 one from below. Okay. See, if it is not corrected, then it will extract the data, deliver uh, the data, and uh, send the acknowledgement. Okay. Uh, it will uh, send uh, the acknowledgement if the data is not. Uh, corrupted. It will send the acknowledgement if the data is corrupted. The uh, sequence number will be different. Okay. Uh, here, see, uh, receive data and not corrupted, and uh, uh, as a sequence number uh, one, then uh, extract the data, uh, deliver data to the upper layer, and uh, send the acknowledgement. And uh, next uh, uh, state is if a packet is received and corrupted, uh, I check the sequence number, then it uh, send the data. Okay, it uh, uh, send the uh, data to the sender uh, with acknowledgement number. With acknowledgement number, uh, like this. Uh, these are some of the action at the receiver side. Right. Next is uh, coming to the reliable data transfer over a lossy channel with bit errors. That is. Uh, level data transfer 3.0. This is the center finite uh, state uh, machine. See, this protocol involves the use of uh, checksum, sequence number, timer, as well as uh, both positive and negative acknowledgement. Okay, uh, you have to remember in uh, reliable data transfer 3.0, uh, it uses a checksum sequence number, timer, also positive and negative acknowledgement. If a checksum is calculated differently at the receiver, then it, uh, it will record at the sender. That is, if the checksum is calculated differently at the receiver than it was recorded at the sender, then a negative acknowledgement is returned. I understood. It will uh, calculate the checksum for detecting the error, and if it uh, mismatch, then it will send the uh, negative acknowledgement. If the checksum matches, then a positive acknowledgement is returned. If the packet does not arrive at all, if the packet does not arrive, then no acknowledgement will be returned, and the timer at the center will time out, and the last packet will be retransmitted. Uh, if an acknowledgement is lost. Uh, then the timeout will uh, also occur, causing retransmission. Uh, I that this is a very a simple protocol uh, that is uh, reliable data transfer protocol 3.0. Uh, at the sender side, uh, what is going to happen? It sends the data and the timer starts. It uh, wait for it waits for an acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is lost, then also the retransmission takes place. And uh, if uh, uh, the data is uh, corrupted, then you are going to get negative acknowledgement. Uh, after that, you are going to resend the same data. If a checksum is uh, calculated uh, at the receiver side uh, was mismatched, then a negative acknowledgement is returned. Uh, if the checksum matches, then a positive acknowledgement is returned. If the packet does not arrive, uh, then no acknowledgement will be returned. If the packet does not arrive at the uh, destination, then you are not going to get any acknowledgement. In that case, the timeout uh, happens, you are going to retransmit the data. Okay. Uh, this is very uh, simple. At the sender side, you are going to send the packet and uh, wait for an acknowledgement. If uh, acknowledgement is received, then you are going to send the next data. If the acknowledgement is not received, then you are uh, sending the same data after timeout. After sending the data, the timer starts. Okay, the timeout to uh, retransmit. That is uh, when you are going to retransmit the data. When the timeout happens, you are going to retransmit the data. When you receive negative acknowledgement, then also you are going to retransmit the data. Okay, if the acknowledgement is lost, then also you are going to uh, retransmit the data. Here, sequence number is maintained to uh, avoid duplicate uh, packet at the uh, receiver side. Time out to retransmit. This is uh, implemented at the sender side. How to implement this uh, uh, time out to retransmit? That is implementing a time-based retransmission mechanism. Uh, see, 
yeah, timeout is there, right? How to implement this at the center? So implementing a time-based retransmission mechanism requires a countdown timer that can interrupt the center after the given amount of time has expired. So when the, the timer starts, uh, after the time expires, you are going to retransmit. This is how you have to implement the timeout at the center side. The implementation of time-based retransmission mechanism requires a countdown timer. You have to count. You have to start countdown uh, that can interrupt uh, the center after a given amount of time has expired. Okay. Next, uh, see uh, at uh, the center, uh, these are the actions uh, performed. That is, send uh, data. Uh, and uh, uh, make a packet uh, by adding the sequence number, the checksum, and the start timer, and wait for an acknowledgement. Uh, if uh, wait acknowledgement is uh, received, uh, then you are going to send the next packet with the sequence number zero or one. If uh, uh, the timer takes place, then you are going to send the packet again, and uh, timer start, and timer starts. Okay, you have to send the data and start the timer. Uh, and uh, if uh, the acknowledgement is uh, received, then you are going to send the next uh, data. If the acknowledgement is not received, uh, when the timer uh, expires, you are going to resend the data. Okay. And uh, if uh, acknowledgement is received and not corrupted, see if uh, uh, receive the packet and not corrupted, then uh, start timer. Okay, start timer and the next uh, send the next packet. Okay, if uh, you receive the acknowledgement and the uh, acknowledgement is not corrected, you stop uh, timer and uh, wait for call one from above. Next, uh, the same thing, and that is you have to uh, send the data and start the timer. Afterwards, uh, if the acknowledgement is received. Uh, then you stop the timer and uh, send the next packet. Okay, uh, the center side, the actions are very simple. You have to uh, send the packet, start the timer, and wait for an acknowledgement. If uh, the acknowledgement receives before the uh, timer expires, then uh, stop the timer, uh, send the next packet. If the uh, timer expires, and acknowledgement is not received, then you have to retransmit the uh, last sent uh, packet and start the timer. Next, uh, next scenario is if you uh, receive the acknowledgement and the acknowledgement is negative, then uh, you have to retransmit the, the last sent packet again. Uh, okay, these are some of the actions at the sender side. Next. Uh, operations of reliable data transfer uh, 3.0. This is alternating the bit uh, protocol. You have to send uh, packet 0 and packet 1. And you have to receive acknowledgement for uh, packet 0 and uh, packet 1. Uh, in this, uh, you consider uh, the operation with no loss and uh, with uh, loss. Okay, uh, right. See, the only two different sequence number are used. Only two different sequence number are used. Uh, one is zero and another one is one, which are uh, alter, alternated between for each successful packet delivery. Okay, uh, you have to use only two sequence number, that is zero and one. Because of this alternating sequence number, this type of protocol is uh, also called as alternating bit protocol. This protocol is also called a stop and wait protocol because it only tries to have one outstanding packet in the uh, sender receiver channel at any uh, given time, at any given uh, moment, uh, only two uh, packets, either zero or one, will be there in the channel. So it is also called as alternative bit protocol because it uses only uh, the sequence number 0 and 1 and uh, sometimes it is also called as a stop and wait protocol because after sending the uh, data it has to wait for an acknowledgement and the 
period is idle and the period is idle only after getting the acknowledgement you have to send the next packet so this protocol is also called as stop and wait protocol uh, because it tries uh, to have one outstanding packet in the center receiver channel at any given time okay you consider send the packet zero receive packet and send acknowledgement zero for uh, packet zero you are going to get the acknowledgement zero for a packet one you are going to get the acknowledgement one for again you have to send the packet zero and you have to get the acknowledgement one you have to wait for an acknowledgement uh, on the center side, you have seen after uh, sending the packet, the timer starts and uh, you have to wait for an acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement arrives before the timer expires, then you are going to stop the timer and you are sending the next uh, packet. If uh, the acknowledgement is negative, then also, then also you have to retransmit the last sent packet and uh, if uh, there is uh, a positive acknowledgement then you can send the next packet right and if uh, the timer expires then also you should retransmit the uh, data okay here with no loss here for all packets you are going to get the acknowledgement there is no uh, loss either in uh, packet or in acknowledgement you are uh, not seeing any uh, loss or errors next in uh, b if there is any loss in the packet when the packet uh, lost uh, in the channel then uh, what is going to happen uh, see uh, there are several scenarios uh, see while sending the data from sender to the receiver the flow of data needs to be controlled the flow of, uh, you have to control uh, see here uh, if you send the packet zero uh, receive packet zero send acknowledgement zero for that packet you have to send the acknowledgement uh, zero and uh, you receive acknowledgement zero send packet one uh, if you, you will send the packet one after the, that you will start the timer and uh, the packet will not reach the destination at that case you are not going to receive any uh, acknowledgement for that packet the timer uh, expires then you are going to resend the same packet again see you are going to resend the same packet Okay, uh, right. Next is uh, after sending the uh, last packet again, you are going to receive the acknowledgement for that uh, particular packet. Then only you are going to send the next packet. Uh, then if acknowledgement arrives, you are sending the next uh, packet with the sequence number uh, one. Like this, uh, the uh, things goes. Uh, this is uh, what the alternating the bit the protocol uh, for every packet you should receive an acknowledgement okay for every packet you have to receive an acknowledgement this is reliable the connection and uh, uh, connection oriented and also uh, after sending every packet you have to wait for next uh, uh, packet to be sent after receiving the acknowledgement after receiving the acknowledgement you have to send the next packet you have to wait until you receive the acknowledgement for the last sent uh, packet. So it is alternating bit uh, because only the packet 0 and 1 you are uh, using. The sequence number used is 0 and uh, 1. All right. Next, see, last ACK. Here, uh, when the packet gets lost, uh, then you have to resend that particular packet when the timer expires. After getting the acknowledgement for the last packet, you have to uh, send the next uh, packet with sequence number. Here, uh, what is going to happen next? If uh, the acknowledgement is lost, you have to send the packet with the sequence number uh, and uh, the receiver will receive the packet. It will send the acknowledgement for that packet. So it is a reliable connection. See, after send, uh, reliable means after the sending the uh, message, you should get acknowledgement for that message. Then only you have to send the next message. No, here uh, you receive the acknowledgement zero, send packet one, right? If you send the packet uh, one, you should get the acknowledgement one. If the acknowledgement is lost, um, then you have to send the packet again. Then you have to send, you have to retransmit the same packet. Okay. Uh, when we are going to retransmit the packet, if the timer expires, if the timer expires, we are going to uh, retransmit that packet again. After sending packet, you have to start the timer 
if uh, the appointment arrives before the uh, timer expires, then you have to send the next packet. Otherwise, you have to uh, retransmit the, the same packet again. Okay. Now, see, packet uh, one you are sending, you are uh, getting the appointment one. Uh, next, you have to send the packet zero. Uh, you have to receive the acknowledgement zero. Okay. Next is the premature timeout. Uh, this case you have to consider. You have to send the packet zero. Afterwards, you have to get the acknowledgement zero. Okay. You get the acknowledgement uh, zero. Next, you are going to send the uh, packet one. Afterwards, uh, what is going to happen? Uh, the timeout uh, takes place, uh, and uh, again uh, you are going to send the packet one. Uh, see, premature uh, means here uh, after sending the packet, uh, the receiver will uh, receive. Uh, after sending the packet, the sender will start the uh, timer, and uh, the receiver will uh, receive the packet. It will uh, uh, replay. Uh, uh, through acknowledgement for the received packet and the acknowledgement arrives after timeout. Okay, see here. Acknowledgement arrives after uh, timeout. So, again, you are going to send the same packet, uh, but uh, because of sequence number, uh, this uh, is rejected at the receiver side because it is a duplicate packet. Because uh, uh, for the uh, packet with the sequence number one, the receiver already uh, sent the acknowledgement, so it will uh, not receive, it will not store that uh, packet, but it will send the acknowledgement again. Okay, after getting the acknowledgement, it will uh, uh, send the uh, next packet with sequence number. Okay, uh, so after uh, sending the packet zero, it will get the acknowledgement. Uh, uh, zero. Uh, see, after sending the packet zero, it will uh, receive the acknowledgement for previously sent uh, packet. At that time, the sender will do nothing. At the, the sender side, uh, no action uh, takes place. Okay. See, while sending the a data from the sender to the receiver, the flow of data needs to be controlled. Uh, uh, Points to be remembered. These are some of the points uh, we have to consider. Uh, that is, while sending the data from the sender to the receiver, the flow of data needs to be controlled. You have to control the flow of data. Uh, based on the capacity of the receiver, you have to send the uh, packet. And uh, suppose a situation where the sender is sending the data at a uh, higher rate than a receiver is able to receive and process it, then the data will get lost. Okay, so and uh, the flow control method will help in ensuring that the data doesn't get lost. The flow control method will keep a uh, check that the sender sent the data only at a rate that the receiver is able to receive and process. This is called as flow control. And uh, there are mainly two uh, ways in which uh, this can be achieved. That is using stop and wait uh, protocol or sliding window protocol. Okay. And using these two protocols, you can uh, control uh, uh, the uh, loss of the packet. You have to understand the speed and the capacity of the receiver. Based on that, you have to send the packet to the receiver. So this is what the flow control is all about. The flow control method will help in ensuring uh, that uh, the uh, uh, data doesn't get lost. The flow control method will keep uh, checked. Will keep a check that the sender sends the data only at the rate that the receiver is able to receive and uh, process. Uh, there are mainly two types. One is the stop and wait protocol uh, or the uh, sliding window of protocol. See, uh, right. What is stop and wait protocol? In stop and wait protocol, after uh, sending the uh, data, we have to wait for an acknowledgement. If acknowledgement is received, uh, then uh, you have to send the next data. Okay. 
based on the window size you have to send. Okay. In stop and wait you have to the center send one data packet at a time. Uh, next uh, the packet uh, only after receiving the acknowledgement for previous. At uh, the center side and the receiver side, uh, what are the actions uh, at the center side and action at the receiver side. In stop and wait protocol, um, it is the very simplest uh, method. In this, uh, the sender will uh, send one frame at a time to the receiver. The sender will uh, stop and wait for the acknowledgement from the receiver. Uh, next, this time is the waiting time. That is the uh, time between message sending and acknowledgement receiving is the waiting time for the sender and the sender is totally idle during this time. So when the sender gets the acknowledgement, then it will send the next data packet to the receiver and wait for the acknowledgement again. And this process will continue as long as the sender has the data to send. This can be understood uh, uh, using uh, uh, the diagram in the next uh, uh, slide we will see that uh, at the receiver side, sender acknowledgement, send acknowledgement after receiving and uh, consuming of uh, data. After consuming uh, packet acknowledgement uh, need to be sent. So uh, at the receiver side, the uh, receiver will receive the packet and uh, send the acknowledgement. Send acknowledgement after receiving and uh, consuming of data packet. And after uh, consuming the packet acknowledgement, after consuming the packet acknowledgement need to be sent. This is called flow control. See, after the uh, data is received, the sender uh, starts the timer. Otherwise, the sender, uh, after sending the data, the sender will wait for an acknowledgement. And the, when the packet is received at the receiver side, the receiver will send the acknowledgement. Okay. To the center. See, this is situation one. If the frame is uh, lost in situation one, what is going to happen? Uh, suppose if any frame sent is not received by the receiver and uh, it is lost, the receiver will not send any acknowledgement. Uh, and as it has not received any frame, so the sender will not send the next frame. Uh, it will wait for the acknowledgement for the previous frame. Uh, so a deadlock situation arises here. To avoid uh, such situation, there is timeout timer. The sender waits for the fixed amount of time for the acknowledgement. Uh, and uh, uh, if the acknowledgement is not received, then it will uh, send the frame again. It will uh, uh, send the frame if the timeout occurs. Here the frame uh, zero is sent and it is uh, the timeout takes place, it will resend the frame again after uh, getting the acknowledgement to zero, it will send the uh, next uh, frame. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, situation one. In situation two, if the acknowledgement is lost, uh, in the situation one, if the frame is lost, you have to resend the frame. If the acknowledgement is lost, again, the sender will send the uh, frame again. Uh, see here. Uh, the situation is if the acknowledgement is blocked. When the receiver has received the data and sent the acknowledgement, but the acknowledgement is lost. Here the acknowledgement is uh, lost. Uh, so again, the center may wait till the infinite time if there is no system of uh, timeout timer. So in this case also, the timeout timer will be used and the center will wait for a, a fixed amount of time for the acknowledgement and then uh, send the frame again if the acknowledgement is not received. If the acknowledgement is not received, uh, then also uh, the sender will send the uh, frame again. Okay. And uh, you can experience two types of delay. One is transmission delay and propagation delay. Uh, the transmission delay is the time taken by the sender to send all the bits of the frame onto the wire is called a transmission delay. And uh, propagation delay is the time taken uh, by the last bit of the frame to reach uh, from one side to the other side is called as uh, propagation delay. Okay, uh, thank you. We will uh, continue the remaining thing in the next session. Right. Have a nice day.